the supreme Linux distro for phones. Even iPhones can run post-market OS, but does that mean it's good? Let's find out. The history of post-market OS is not very interesting. It was launched on May 6th of 2017 with support for the Nexus 4 and the Galaxy S2 with a Westin graphical user interface. Over time, Postmarket OS got support from more and more desktop environments including Mate, XFCE, GNOME, Flash, Plasma, and Plasma Mobile, and soon even Lomary might come to Postmarket OS. Postmarket OS also gained support for more and more phones, starting with only two phones, which I mentioned earlier, and today booting on over 200 phones. Installing Postmarket OS is a lot more difficult to install than most other OSs because you have to build it yourself. It is very customizable and supports almost any UI you want, but because of the extra options it can be harder to install. As a summary, you have to install PM Bootstrap, configure PM Bootstrap, build an image and flash it to the SD card, and that's it. I have a full guide on how to do that on my website, and there's also going to be a guide right here for a video guide on how to do it. Now, it's kind of hard to discuss the UI since you can use whatever UI you want. Uh, you do get to choose your UI from many choices during installation. You can choose a desktop UI like Mate, GNOME, Plasma, or uh, XFCE, or you can use a mobile UI like Fosh or Plasma Mobile. The choice is up to you. Plasma Mobile has the most features, but in my experience it is very buggy. Fosh is less buggy and it feels more complete, but Fosh is also very new and GDK applications are still being worked for it given that Plasma Mobile had a huge head start to um, Fosh. If you choose Fosh as your UI, there are seven apps pre-installed. A phone and messaging app, GNOME Web, Cheese, Extensions, Files, Settings, and a terminal emulator. I don't know why Extensions is installed because Fosh can't run GNOME extensions and Cheese doesn't do anything because it cannot detect a camera. There also isn't an app store pre-installed, so you have to install GNOME-Software in order to install apps without using the command line. If you choose Plasma Mobile as your UI, there are 9 apps installed. File Manager, which is Index, uh, Kiragami Gallery, a phone book, Pix, Spacebar, which is your messaging app, a terminal emulator, a phone app, a web browser, and a camera app. Interestingly though, for some reason Plasma Settings does not come pre-installed by default, which means it's impossible to connect to Wi-Fi without using something like uh, NMTUI um, in a terminal window. Like Fosh, Plasma Mobile does not come with an app store, so if you want a graphical user interface for installing packages, you have to install Discover. If you install Postmarket OS Plasma Extras instead of just regular Plasma, you also get a note-taking app, a XMPP slash Jabber client, a public transport app, a text editor, a document viewer, a music client, a email client, and a calendar. I kind of wish that Fosh got its own Fosh Extras, but unfortunately it doesn't. Postmarket OS is based on Alfine Linux and uses Alfine's repository for most of its apps, although there is also a Postmarket OS repository with like some Postmarket packages, but that's beside the point. There are a lot of apps missing on Alfine Linux repository, so you're going to have to use Flatpaks for them despite Postmarket OS not officially supporting Flatpaks. Some of the biggest apps missing I noticed were Lollipop Music Player and Peer Maps. On Postmarket OS with Fosh, GNOME Web is very slow and when it does eventually load your websites, it is very choppy when you scroll around, but at least the UI works well on GNOME Web. Firefox also works, but its UI does not fit in the screen on portrait mode and many websites get cut off. Firefox also crashes frequently and the browser is set to a desktop user agent, so you get desktop sites unless the site can adapt to smaller screens. Fortunately, if Firefox doesn't crash, websites run great for the most part. On this Plasma side, Angelfish opens and the UI seems pretty mobile friendly enough, but I can't get any websites to load. So that sucks, I can't test it because it's just a blank screen. So yeah, the web browser experience at PostMarketOS needs some improvement. PostMarketOS has a very big and active community. 
from Matrix and IRC to Twitter and Mastodon to, of course, a Reddit community because there's a subreddit for everything. But Postmarket is missing a forum with GitHub issues, Reddit and IRC and Matrix posing as somewhat of a replacement. But I still think that there should be a forum, but it does take a lot of effort to maintain a forum. In conclusion, I believe that Postmarket OS is a jack-of-all-trades, master-of-none type of operating system. Sure, it can run on more than 200 devices, but not a single one supports every feature, although the Pinephone is almost there, it's just missing the camera support. It also supports almost every GUI you can think of, but it's missing several mobile apps, like Lollipop and Peer Maps. I think Postmarket OS is worth giving a shot, but keep in mind it's not going to be usable as a daily driver OS, even in comparison to some of the other Pinephone OSs. So, yeah. Thank you for watching this video, thanks to Michelle Vantino, Sam Covet, and Jim Peter for becoming patrons on Patreon, use the link below to become a patron, and also thanks to people who tip me on LBRY, I really appreciate it. Bye!